students welcome to today's class in our today's lesson we will uh, learn short questions from different chapter of your textbook okay let's begin first of all we will solve some questions related to mathematical sentence and the calculation rules and ideas um, in part one we already completed 16 short questions so today we will start from question number 17 okay question number 17 has written a mathematical sentence and you have to find the answer for this type of problem we have to do some rough but before that we have to know what are the rules for solving solving this kind of problem here you can see in a mathematical sentence there are some operators like minus minus and also multiplication and also bracket so which thing we will do first at first we have to solve the problem within the bracket that means inside the bracket inside the bracket we have to solve it first then inside the bracket we have to look for the operator division if there is no division then we have to do multiplication after doing multiplication we will do addition or subtraction any anyone so at first um, if we see inside the bracket you can see 8 minus 4 times 2 that is inside the bracket there are two operators we will do, we will do rough for this problem inside the bracket there are two operators one is minus another one is multiply so which we will do first here we have to do the multiplication first so if the multiplication we do at first then we will get 9 minus 8 it will be same as before but 4 times 2 will be 8 so 8 minus 8 so if 8 minus 8 now we have to do 8 minus 8 so 8 minus 8 will be 0 so 9 minus 0 the answer is Zero. So, answer of question number 17 is 0. Uh, question number answer number 17 is question number 17 answer is 9. Okay. Now, let's do the next problem. Here, you can see there are three operators, three mathematical operators. One is minus, another one is division, and another one is multiplication. So, which one we will do first? We have to do the division first. We have to do the division first and we have to do graph again so for the second problem if we do division first so 9 minus this thing we will do first 8 divided by 4 so 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2 and then times 2 it, it will be as usual so 9 minus 2 times 2 is 4 now we have to do the multiplication after division we have to do multiplication so 9 minus 4 is equal to 5. The answer of question number 18 is 5. Now, question number 19. Question number 19, there are two same operators. So, in this sentence, which we will do first? We have to do the first one is first. That is, the first operator here is division. So, this division we have to do at first not this one we have to start with this operator because the calculation we need to start from right side to from left side to right side in case of similar operator okay then if we do rough 16 divided by 4 will be 4 then divided by 2 then 4 divided by 2 is 2 so the answer of 19 will be 2 now question number 20 question number 20 at first we have the bracket so we have to do the bracket first and then there is a inside the bracket there are two operators one is multiplication and another one is minus or subtraction so which will we do first here we do multiplication first so if we do multiplication here the graph will be 7 x are 56 minus 6 divided by 2 and 56 minus 6 will be 
50 divided by 2. Now 50 divided by 2, we know 50 divided by 2 will be 25. So answer of this question will be 25. Now let's move on to the next problem, 21. Here we have to do the inside the bracket operator first. Here inside the bracket operator is 8 minus 6. So we have to write 7 as usual. And then 8 minus 6 will be 2, then divided by 2. Here, there are two operators. One is multiplication, another one is division. So we have to do division first. 2 divided by 2. We know that similar number division is 1. So 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1, and 7 times 1 is 7. So answer of question number 21 will be 7. Now, the last one of this list, the price of 5 pencils is 60 taka. What is the price of 9 pencils? So, how can we write this problem? At first, we have to make a mathematical sentence like this. You know, the price of 5 pencil is 60 taka. So, at first, we have to find the price of 1 pencil. And you know, the price of 1 pencil will be less than 60. So, we have to divide 60 by 5 at first. So if we write the mathematical sentence at first, it will be 60 divided by 5 and it is the price of 1 pencil. At first we have to find the uh, price of 1 pencil, then we need to find the price of 9 pencil. So if we want to find the price of 9 pencil, then we have to multiply the price of 1 pencil by 9, then we can get the price of 9 pencil. So this is the mathematical sentence, at first we have to make mathematical sentence from this word problem and then we solve. 60 divided by 5, 60 divided by 5 will be 12 times 9. And now we have to multiply 12 by 9. So 9 to the 18 in hand 1, 9 on the 9 plus 1, 10. So the price of 9 pencil will be 108. Alright? Next, we move to some more uh, problems from another chapter. Let's see. Now, we will solve some questions from chapter number 6 related to mathematical sentence. First question says, what are the numeral symbols? What are the numeral symbols? Actually, in mathematics, the digits we use to write numbers are called numeral symbols. These are called numeral symbols. For example, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All these 10 digits are called numeral symbols. Next, what are the operation symbols? Operation means the calculation we do in math. Uh, so there are four operation symbols which are plus, minus multiplication and division so these four symbols are called operation symbols question number 25 what are the relation symbols there are so many relation symbols relation symbols are those which indicates the relation between the numbers that is uh, the relation symbol equal to which is called the two sides of the mathematical sentence are equal then less than symbol, then greater than symbol, then not equal to symbol, then not less than symbol, and not greater than symbol. So there are six relation symbols in your textbook. Now, question number 26, what are the types of mathematical sentence? Actually, there are two types of mathematical sentence. There are two types of mathematical sentence. Number one, true sentence. And number two, number two, false sentence, false mathematical sentence. So what are the true sentence? If both sides of a mathematical sentence are equal, then it is called true sentence. For example, 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. So we know 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. So 5 plus 2 is also 7 and equal to Seven. So both sides, left side and right side of this mathematical sentence are equal. So this is true sentence. And 
false sentence means like um, if I say for example that 5 minus 2 equal to 7 so is it correct this is not correct we know 5 minus 2 is equal to 3 but I write 7 so this is false sentence this is not correct this is false so this is called false sentence all right uh, so now let's move on to next chapter now we solve questions from fraction as you can see some questions are in fraction the addition and subtractions to do additions and subtraction there are so many ways but in this chapter uh, uh, today we just follow a shortcut technique for solving the short questions only we can use a technique shortcut technique which I called butterfly method so what is butterfly method at first you do rough for this problem say question number 27 you write the question at first here like this now we can draw a butterfly here by doing the calculations 2 and 7 sorry mm, if I write again mm, 2 by 5 plus 3 by 7 so if I draw here like this and like this and like this at first we will do the multiplication of 2 and 7 and we write here 2 and 7 then write here so 2 and 7 2 times 7 is 14 so we write 14 here and 5 and 3 multiply 5 and 3 and write here 5 and 3 multiply is 15 now you have to multiply these two 5 and 7 5 times 7 is 35 we write here so now if we add 14 and 15 we get 29 and 3 times uh, 5 times 7 is 35 so if we write here 35 so the answer is 29 divided by 35 so the answer of this question is 29 divided by 35 okay now let's do another one the next one if we do <coughs> 3 by 7 and 1 by 3 here so at first we write we draw like this and also like this so 7 times 3 is 21 and now 3 times 3 is 9 we write here and 7 times 7 is 7 so if we write 9 plus 7 is 16 and in the bottom side it will be 21 so the answer of this question will be 16 and 21 actually we can do rough also here in the question for minus we will do just like this So 3 times 4 is 12 we write here 12 and also 4 times 1 is 4 and 3 times 1 is 3 in the middle there is minus so 4 minus 3 will be 1 and in the denominator it will be 12 okay now the last one now if we don't draw the butterfly we can also use the fact that is 6 times 5 is 30 so you write 30 in the denominator and also 5 times 5 is 25 we write here 25 
minus 6 times 2 is 12. So 25 minus 12 will be 13. So we write 13 here. All right. So I hope you can uh, practice more and more from your textbook to see whether it is worked. Mm. Okay. Now move on to next chapter. All right. Now uh, let's solve problem from decimal. At first, question number 31, write 1.56 in words. So at first we have to write like this, uh, one point. So how we say decimal numbers, how we say one point, then not 56. No, we cannot say 56. We have to say 1.56, 1.56. This is the correct after decimal after decimal you have to say each and every word differently not together not 56 not 56 you have to say differently 5 6 like this if the number is bigger then you have to pronounce the each and uh, each digits separately you understand now question number 32 what is hundreds place what is hundreds place Actually, in decimal, uh, there are two point decimals, and there are three points decimal, there are one point decimal. So, um, in uh, in uh, natural numbers, we say just ones place, tens place, hundreds place, thousands place. But in decimal number, we say tenth place, hundredth place, th, thousandth place, thousands. After thousand, there is a th. So, thousands place. What are these? For example, if I say 1 divided by 10, it will be 0 0.1. So after decimal, if there are only one digit, this is called 10th place. This is called 10th place. And similarly, if uh, for 100 plates, if I divide 1 by 100, if we divide 1 into 100's equal place, equal uh, portion, then we get 0 0.01. We will get two decimal places after decimal after decimal we get two places and these two places are called hundredths place hundredths place this is tenth place the first one is called tenth place and second one is called hundredths place so what is hundredths place 0 0.01 and this one is called the hundredths place similarly what is thousandths place Thousand plus means if I divide one by one thousand, then we get zero point zero zero one, and there will be three decimal places. First one is tenth place, second one is hundredths place, and third one is called the thousandths place. Here you can uh, see that when we divide hundred, and there are two zeros in hundred, so the decimal place will be two digits. And if we divide 1000 and there are three uh, zeros in a thousand number, so we get three place in the decimal. So the thousands place is 0 0.001. All right. Next, move on to uh, next question. Question number 34 asks, how many 0.01s are there in this number? There is a number 0 0.23, 0 0.23, and we know there are so many 0, 0.0 there are so many 0 0.01s like 0 0.01 0 0.01 0 0.01 0 .01. like this if you add if you add so many 0 0.01s you will get a number like this if we add this number 23 times we will get 0 0.23 so how many 0 0.01s are there actually there are 23 0 0.01s now how can we find this um, solution uh, instantly how uh, if we write the given number at first the given number is 0 0.23 0 0.23 this is the given number and this is the model number model that is this 0 0.23 should be matched with this given number uh, 0 0.01 the model number is 0 0.01 so if we write 0 0.2 3 in the upper side and 0 0.01 in the lower side and then we match each other position then first 0 0 only position only position 2 is matched with this 0 and 3 is matched with this number so every position is matched after matching 
if we remove the decimal from the given number if we remove the decimal from the given number what remain 0 to 3 that is 23 so the answer is 23 that is 23 0.01s together makes 0 0.23 okay for better understanding let's solve another one question number 35 how many 0.01s are there how many 0.01s are there in 4.07 how many 0.01s are there 0.01s are there in 4.7 so at first you write the given number 0. Uh, 4.07 and then write the model number 0. 0.01 now match all the position 0 and 4 matched 0 and 0 matched and 7 and 1 matched every for every uh, digit there are corresponding digits so if we remove the decimal from the given number we get 407 so 407 0.01s together we get 4.07 similarly question number 36 we will get guess what here 0.001 here also 2.001 so after decimal there are three digits and before decimal there are one digit here also before decimal there are one digit and after decimal there are three digits so if we remove the decimal of the given number we will get 2075 so 2075 0.01s together if we if we add together it will make 2.075 now the final one be careful for the final one again we do rough at first write the given number 6.82 the given number is 6.82 now if we match with this number it will 0 0.001 0 0.001 here 6 is matched with 0 point is matched with point 8 is point is the first 0 2 is point with the second 0 now say for this one there is no point there is no digit here so you can use a 0 we know after decimal at the last of the digits you can put as many 0 as you can so if you put a 0 here so now if we remove the point here we will get 6820 and this will be the answer 6820 6820 will be the answer uh, if you just remove the decimal and say the answer is 682 that will be wrong because you have to match this point and this point together and then you have to put out the decimal point and then give the answer okay now let's move on to next chapter question number 38 asks write the formula to find the area of a square square you know the square is like this shape where all the sides are equal a shape where all the sides are equal is called the square now uh, to find the area say the side of this area is uh, this is the side and all the sides are equal all sides are equal same side the length of all sides are equal so there is no length there is no width only side so we if we say side then the formula to write find the area of a uh, square is like uh, just simply side if we multiply side and side then we get the area okay area so side times side and you have to write the unit is square unit is square unit to write the area we use a square unit okay now write the formula to find the perimeter of a square perimeter what is perimeter you know the total distance of any shape is called perimeter that is uh, the outer sh uh, distance that is um, here for example this is two centimeter this is two centimeter this is also two centimeter this is also two centimeter if we write uh, add all this um, two plus two plus two plus two that is four or if we multiply two just by four sides then we get the uh, perimeter of this square so the formula of to find the perimeter of a square will be four times side four times side and this will be only unit not a square unit a square unit only we write when the area is written and only unit is uh, written when we write the perimeter or length or width or side we write only unit that is only meter only centimeter only kilometer like this but when we say about the area we have to say square meter square centimeter square kilometer like this the next question is write the formula to find the area of a rectangle area of a rectangle so we know the uh, rectangle like 
this is a rectangle and this is the length if this is the length this is the width so if we multiply length and width we go, we get the area of a rectangle so we write length times width the another name of width is breadth 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 width or breadth both are equal both are same same width or breadth are same and this is the length so we have to write a square unit a square unit um, when we talk about area it will be a square unit another one write the formula to find the perimeter of a rectangle again here the perimeter of the rectangle will be uh, length plus width plus length you know in a rectangle two length are equal and two width are equal so if we write here two lengths and two widths so total if we write only length plus width length plus width and then multiply by two length plus width and multiply divided by multiply by two and we have to write the unit because this is perimeter so when we write perimeter we just write unit when we write area we write square unit all right so this is the formula to find the perimeter of a rectangular that is length plus width times two uh, next uh, question asks write the tally sign of nine you know tally sign is like uh, uh, a vert uh, vertical bar like l so this is three four and when four is completed it is five another one so it, this is five now six seven eight nine so this is the tally sign of nine next question asks uh, two minutes is equal to how many seconds uh, we know two minutes one minute is equal to 60 seconds so two minute will be 60 times 2 that will be 6 times 2 is 12 and 0 120 seconds so the answer it will be 120 seconds now next question three hours is equal to how many minutes we know one hour is equal to 60 minutes so three hours will be 60 times 3 so if we multiply 3 times 6 is 18 and there is a 0 so 180 minutes 180 minutes will be the answer now one leap year is equal to how many days one leap year is equal to how many days we know uh, normally one year is equal to 365 days but leap year means there is a one day extra in February in February month there will be 29 days so the answer will be 366 366 days in a leap year all right now move on to next questions now we learn some uh, short questions from geometry chapter the first question says what are the types of triangles based on sides based on sides uh, there are three types of triangle first one is equilateral triangle equilateral equilateral means where all three sides are equal that is called equilateral triangle number two is um, isosceles triangle or isosceles triangle isosceles or isosceles isosceles triangle means where only two sides are equal in a triangle that is called isosceles triangle and number three is scalene triangle scalene where no sides are equal all sides are different no sides are equal that is called scalene triangle now what are the types of triangles based on angles so based on angles there are also three types of uh, triangles number one is right angled triangle right angled triangle right angle triangle uh, if one angle of a triangle is 90 degree then it is called right angle triangle number two um, number two acute triangle acute if the angles of any triangle is less than 90 degree less than 90 degree then it is called acute triangle acute triangle now number three is obtuse triangle obtuse that is if one angle of any triangle is greater than 90 degree then it is called obtuse triangle question number 48 what is the size of the biggest angle of a right angle triangle you know right angle triangle they are the biggest angle will be 90 degree and other two sides uh, other two angles will be less than 90 degree so answer is 90 degree what is the size of the biggest angle of a right angle triangle so right angle triangle we know right angle triangle means at least one uh, one triangle if 
one angle is 90 degrees. So the biggest si size of that angle is also 90 degrees. Now question number 49, what is the sum of the angles of a triangle? If we sum all the angles of a triangle, that is this angle and this angle and this angle, if we measure and then we sum all the size, then we will get 180 degree, always. Always we will get 180 degree. If we add all the angles together, we will get 180 degree, always. For any kind of triangle, for equilateral, we, we will get 180 degree, for isosceles, for scalene, for right angle triangle, for acute triangle, for obtuse triangle, all triangles will get 180 degree for, to if we sum all the measurement of the angles. Now question number 50, what is the size of an angle of an equilateral triangle? Here uh, equilateral, we know that equilateral triangle, all the sides are equal. And also there is a, um, another thing that in equilateral triangle, all the angles are also equal. So if total angle is 180 degree, there are three angles. So if we divide 180 uh, degree into three different part, so we'll get 60, 60 and 60. So the size of an angle of an equilateral triangle will be 60 degree, which completes our answer. So we uh, today we learned a lot of questions from different chapters of uh, the textbook. These are on, uh, these are model short questions for your exam, which are very important. You will practice this at home. So these 50 questions will be your homework. These 50 questions will be your homework. 50 short questions will be your homework. So you will do practice at home more and more. Um, hopefully we will meet in the next class. So till then, uh, goodbye.